uh, live streaming from wherever that you may be joining us from. Welcome into our Sunday night Bible study slash preaching uh, service. Amen. Uh, we are studying in First Peter, First Peter, and chapter number two, First Peter, and uh, chapter uh, number two, and we're ready for verse uh, number ten. Ready for verse ten? I'm going to back up. To verse 9. Let me make an announcement real quickly. June 6th, 7th, and 8th, having a big yard sale, two churches coming together right here in the front lawn, the front porch, parking lot of the Shepherd's House right here, 7464 Edmonton Road, Glasgow, Kentucky. Proceeds will be going for our mission trip. Saturday night, June 8th, we'll be having our benefit singing, 6 p.m. The uh, Singing groups will be coming and singing. Uh, that night will be Battle Cry and the Joy Makers, those two groups. And a love offering will be taken. Again, service starts at 6 p.m. After church, we'll be having a cake and pie auction. Back in the fellowship hall, after church is dismissed that night. And those proceeds will also go toward uh, the mission trip. So please help us get the word out. And let everybody know uh, these will be our next fundraisers. Uh, before going uh, to Africa. And we're praying and believing that there'll be enough money. We got faith that enough money will be here uh, to meet all of these needs. We're even believing we'll have more than enough. I believe we got a big God. I'm just going to believe big, aren't you? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. We're going to uh, start in uh, verse 9, and then we'll pick up on verse 10. 1 Peter chapter number 2. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into marvelous light. Praise the Lord. He called us. We once were in sin. We once were blinded by the prince of this world. Amen. And now we have uh, the light of the Lord to show us the right way. Amen. Uh, the marvelous way. Praise the Lord. I don't know why some people makes out like it's such a burden to serve the Lord. It's not a burden to serve the Lord. The burden is living for the devil. The burden is being alone, having to fight your own battles and work things out for yourself. That's what brings unhappiness. But uh, putting our faith and our trust in God, amen, brings joy. Amen? Which in time past, verse 10, were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So at one time, we weren't the, the people of God, but now we are. At one time, we had no hope, but now we do. At one time, there was no joy, but now we have joy unspeakable and full of glory. At one time, we had no future, but now we have eternity in God's beautiful heaven before us. Amen. Reuniting with the saints of God that's gone on to be with the Lord. What a future. Walking on streets of gold, living in a mansion, praise the Lord, on Hallelujah Avenue. Amen. Won't have a mailbox. Everybody will just come see you. Amen. Won't have any bills to pay. No, won't be anything like that. Won't be no lawsuits. Won't be no uh, things like that to cause you problems. Amen. Praise the Lord. A place of peace. And here's something that will blow your mind. There won't be any fakes up there. Oh, wow. No devil up there. Amen. Man, I tell you what, 15 minutes without him would be something else. Amen. That would make uh, heaven worth it all to, just to not be around him. Amen. I'm kind of like it. It was a big old um, logger that lived in the area, a really good Christian man. Uh, he had arms about that big around. and Anyway, he was stout as an ox. Great big man, weighed over 300 pounds, stood six foot tall or so. Whew. Man, he was a mighty man, hard working man, good Christian man. He told me one day he told me, 
real slow when he talked. He was real country. He said, you know what? He said, I wish the Lord would tie him a few minutes. I sure would love to whoop him. I said, you're big enough to, ain't no doubt about that. Amen. I'm sure just about everybody like to go by and spit in the devil's face or bust his nose. Amen. I don't know where I could do it just one time or not. I'd have to do it three times at once. Amen. I'd I just get beside myself. Amen. Praise the Lord. But there'll be a day coming. We'll say goodbye, world. Goodbye, devil. No more pain, no more sorrow, amen? Praise the Lord. And we'll have everlasting peace and joy in that beautiful place. And what's going to make it so good is Jesus is going to be there. The one that bled and died to set us free from our sins. The one who took the stripes on his back for our healing. The one who sent the Holy Ghost back, the third part of God, amen, that we could feel in our hearts and know that he is real. Bless his holy name. That's what's going to make heaven good. I'm going to look forward to seeing all them others, but now what's going to make heaven is seeing the master. That's what's going to make heaven so good. All right. Praise the Lord. So at one time we were not a people, but now we are the people of God, uh, which, uh, you know, we've now obtained that mercy. Praise his holy name. Verse 11, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Now he's looking at us as pilgrims, amen, as strangers. Well, Brother Jimmy, how can we be a stranger? If you are in love with the Lord, you are offended by the world. Amen. The world gets under your skin. People of the world get under your skin. They frustrate you to death. Ooh, carnal people just... Mm frustrates me to death. You can't talk to them. You can't reason with them. You can draw them a picture and they can't see it. Amen. You can't make them understand the things of God. Amen. All they talk about is politics and world and things of that nature. And every time you get on the Bible, uh, they don't know what they're talking about, so they get off on something else. I don't like to be around people like that. I like to be around people that I can talk to about the Lord, that I know if we have to, we can quit what we're doing and go to praying over something. Now, that would be a joy. Amen. Praise the Lord. But anyway, we are people pilgrims. We're strangers here. Amen. See, when you go to, when I went to Portugal, I was a stranger over there. Now, there's some places in America that I hadn't been before, but it's still America. I pretty well know the customs here, and I can pretty well find my way because I'm still in America. Over there, I don't speak Portuguese. I don't know where nothing was. I got off the airplane. Man, it was just like going to the moon. I had no idea where west and east and north or, or no, nothing like that. It all, man, I was a stranger, but they made me feel at home. I was a pilgrim, amen, because I was just there for a week, and I was a coming back home, amen. We are pilgrims. We just here for a while. My main home is on Hallelujah Avenue. It's not in Glasgow, Kentucky. That's just a temporary place, amen. I'm a stranger, amen. I live here, but it's just as if I don't know what's going on. Hey, man, you uh, asked me, uh, what do you think about this country music singer? I said, if they've come in uh, since Charlie Pride went out, I don't have a clue who they are. If it's anybody since Mel Tillis, I don't know who they are because I don't listen to it. Ain't listened to it in 37 years. Uh, hey, man, the Lord told me to get rid of that mess, and I got rid of it. Uh, I don't know who's a singing them beer drinking lustful love to love you baby waltz across Texas with you type songs amen because I don't listen to that kind of stuff anymore I'm a stranger when I go somewhere and people start uh, talking they say well Louisville really done good last night didn't they I say I don't know what Louisville do They'll say, are you a Wildcats fan? I say, well, I like lions and tigers and wildcats and bobcats and lynx and a lot of different things, but I don't know much about the ball games. Well, Brother Jimmy, you are just like somebody that's a stranger. You got it. You just read about me right here in the Bible. I'm a pilgrim.
stranger. I don't know much about this world. Amen. I don't know much about the things that's going on in this world. Amen. I got my suitcase packed. Amen. It's not packed to go to Africa yet, but my spiritual suitcase is packed to go to glory land. Amen. Listen, I want to be ready to meet God when the time comes. Amen. I'm not going to fall too much in love with this world because I know this thing is going to be set on fire and it's going to be burned up. There's going to be a new city called Jerusalem coming down. Amen. From heaven. Praise God. And God's people's going to live inside that city. Brother Jimmy, how big is that city going to be? It's going to be 1,500 miles long and 1,500 miles wide and 1,500 miles deep. Woo -wee. Man, we're going to have us a time. And I'm going to run around that thing two or three laps. Amen. The first year. Praise God. We're going to have us a time when we get into that that beautiful city whose builder and maker is God. Whew. Praise the Lord. What are we going to eat, Brother Jim? I'm going to eat the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. The manna from heaven. Praise the Lord. I'm going to drink. Amen. Of his love. I'm going to bask, not in the sunshine, but in the S-O-N shine. Amen. The sunshine of Jesus Christ. Bless his holy name. We're going to have a time when we get to that land. But here, I am a pilgrim. But here, I am a stranger. Amen. Some will say, well, they say they got a new medication out. I don't know. Amen. Some says they got this over here. I don't know about that. Ain't heard anything about it. Amen. I'm by my head's in revivals and Bibles and gospel songs and grandchildren. Amen. That's what my life's all about. Amen. Uh, now, if you want to ask me about some of the little dolls, I can tell you about them because I had to play with the granddaughter sometimes. Whew. But anyhow, I don't know much about this worldly things. Amen. These grandkids will get you to do things that you normally wouldn't do. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Verse 11. Listen, I'm going to read it again. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, now, comma, abstain. What does abstain mean? Leave it alone. Keep away from, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. What in the world would be fleshly lust? Everything you see on television. Stay away from it as much as possible. I very seldom ever see television. Every now and again, I'll watch the news, but not very often. I don't want to hear it. It ain't nothing but a mess. Most of the stuff I see is Andy Griffith and uh, Rockford Files and things of that nature that don't have any advertisements in it. Get it off YouTube, and it's free. I don't have to put up all that cussing and all that kind of stuff. I hate that stinking stuff. Hey, man, I ain't going to be around it very much. Hey, man, but these words of lust, let me explain to you what lust is. When you turn on the television, hey, man, and it looks like two dogs in heat between two sheets. Oh, we got quiet in here then. Amen. But Jimmy, just like you got a bone to pick with the world. Amen. If you get right with God, you'd have one to pick too. It'd be offensive to you too. If you enjoy that mess, you're messed up. That's all I'm going to say. Something's not right with you if you can sit right there and go, wow, I'm a drooling at the mouth. Kiss her, slobber all over there, boy. Nasty. Nasty, 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 ungodly. It'll cause you to think things. Well, Brother Jimmy, I don't think things. You are a liar. <laughs> Boy, Brother Jimmy, you plain, ain't you? I said, yeah, I'm plain. I want to tell you just like it is. You can't watch that mess without thoughts coming through your mind. Well, Brother Jimmy, I don't let them thoughts come through my mind. I don't let them either. But if I watch them long enough, they'll start coming where I let them or not. Because you're entertaining those things. You need to get it off of that mess, get it on something else. Amen. And it's not just sexual lust that he's talking about. It's lusting after power, lusting after worldly things. Amen. And the most of the stuff that you see on television and the most of the stuff you see in public is lusting after power and receiving more property and more money. Listen. You start talking about money, and you draw everybody's attention. 
they're in a daze. Amen. You talk about the Lord, and when you get done talking, you say, what do you think about that? They'll say, huh? My mind's on something else. You bet your money, and they're like, I called every bit of that. So that's how I can get more money. That's how the con artists do as good as what they do. Sign up right here and get your, if you're over 50, did you realize there's benefits for you that the government's going to pay? Oh, golly. Amen. All of that lustful stuff to try to get you, and you have him telemarketers call. Hello, this is your captain speaking. You have won a free cruise to the Bahamas. Stay on the line and get more information. I will click. Anything's free is going to cost too much. You might not be able to afford it when they get done with you. It's free today and 2000 tomorrow. Amen. So you leave those things alone. Lust things. They war against the soul. I'm going to tell you something. When your job or whatever it is that you're doing starts warring against you, it's the time right then to back off and get done with it and get it out of the way. Amen? Now, I know we're going to have some warring against the soul. You have to make a living. I understand all of that very much. But you know what I'm talking about. Things where it's just overtime and overtime to where every moment you're either working on the way to work, on the way home from work, or trying to figure out a way to make tomorrow a little bit easier if you can shortcut some things and do something a little bit extra and maybe you'll get a promotion. That kind of stuff wars against your soul. You can't think about God and meditate upon spiritual things if every moment of your thoughts is constantly on something else. Things wars against the soul. People will cause you, and I know I, I spend a lot of time on this, but the, the biggest thing that I've seen happen to people that got delivered and got saved down through the years was going back to their old friends. Amen. You have to cut loose of some of those friends that are pulling you down. I've got friends that I love, but I only need them about two hours once or twice a week. Any more than that, they go to pulling me down. You mean worldly friends? I don't know. I'm talking about Christian. <laughs> it's sad. Wars against you. You love them to death. You do anything in the world you could for them. But they're so carnal, they can't see how carnal they are, and they don't understand, amen, they're shortening your war out every day that you're with them. And they don't mean to. Amen. It's like being in a hog pen with hogs, amen, and preaching about sanctification. Amen. It gives you the same feeling. Do you ever have that feeling that you're just dirty? You know, you, you know, you ain't committed adultery and you ain't done anything like that. But you just kind of just don't feel as clean as you need to feel because of, of somebody you're working right next to. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know how it is on fleshly stuff. You go to hanging around somebody, and next thing you know, is that coming from me? <laughs> uh, you know it's not. But subconsciously, you just want to make sure it ain't. Mm. And did you know when you hear enough stuff over and over and over, you know what? The only way you can cause some things not to affect you is not to put it in in the first place. I'm going to tell you what happened to me. Me and my wife, uh, I guess it's my wife, me and one of the girlfriends, uh, years ago, I think it was her. That's how long it's been. I've been well over 30, 40 two years ago, so anyhow, I think it was her, uh, but anyhow, I went to the drive-in with other girls, I, she's not the only one I ever dated, she's just the only one I ever loved, Amen. that's the truth, that's the truth, but anyhow, uh, I, I went to the drive-in theater, and you know what they were playing, they were playing The Exorcist, and I sat right there and watched every bit of it. My mom and dad would have beat me to death if they knowed I was there. I was about 18 years old. You understand what I was saying? Uh, if I'd have been a Christian, you'd have never got me in there to see that. 
I really didn't know what was playing. I didn't care. I just went to be with the girlfriend. I went to hold hands and drink Coke, Cokes and get a hamburger and a bag of popcorn, spend some time with a girlfriend. I wasn't really interested. That just happened to be what was on. Now, what are you trying to say? That's been over 40 years ago, and some of that haunts me today. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I wish I had never went and saw it. Amen. It's the most ungodly, untasteful, uh, demonic thing that's ever been in a theater anywhere. Amen. If I'd have been a Christian, it was bothering me bad enough, and I wouldn't even saved. If I'd have been saved, I'd have had to left. That's all it was to it. And I kept thinking the whole time, boy, if my daddy was coming here and catch me in here, even 18 years old, he beat me half to death. That's sick. That's sad. It's sick. That's how bad. Now, what, why did you tell that story? I told that story to let you know 40 years later, I still have pop-ups that comes in my mind. If I'd have never saw it, then pop-ups couldn't come in my mind. That's my point. If we're not around lustful music all day long, you might not have so many lustful things uh, warring against your soul. Uh, amen. That's why Christians don't need to be listening to that stuff. Oh, I love you, baby. Put your lips on mine. Whew. Makes me sick. Amen. But it wars against the soul. What you need to be listening to, amen, is stuff like, I got victory over the enemy. He's a way maker, chain breaker. That's who he is. Amen. Listening to things like that instead of things of the world. Amen. I hadn't listened to that other type of stuff in 30 uh, something years. I don't want to either. Amen. While I'm clean, I plan on staying that away. But some people set themselves up. They watch stuff on television. They let their kids listen to words. Uh, amen. That's in those programs and things. And then they want to correct them. Double standards, double standards. So uh, therefore, if we are around, uh, amen, that lustful stuff, it's going to war against the soul. Well, Brother Jimmy, it won't war against my soul. Then you just called God a liar because the Bible says it does. I just read it to you. Amen. I know you're thinking, Brother Jimmy, you seem like an argumentative person. God called me to preach to the goats and the hardheads. And there's some people today, you've got to have a bit with a diamond, you've got to have a drill with a diamond bit on it. And then you'll have to drive a thought with a sledgehammer when you get the hole drilled to get it in their head because <laughs> they are so <laughs> set in their ways. See, I didn't call anybody's name. Hopefully, ain't none of y'all like that here tonight. <laughs> Amen. But anyhow, I have to preach strong and hard. Amen. Because people are rebellious. Verse 12, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. They will see your good works and glorify the heavenly Father. Those that speaks evil against you, amen, and thinks evil against you will soon be quietened down and ashamed of their self for the things that they've said, and they will turn and say good things about you because of the goodness of the Lord. You know, there's people that will talk about you, say things about you, but see, when you come walking up with a big old bag full of clothes after they've had a burnout, they won't have nothing to say about you bad then. When you come bringing a, a big old bag full of groceries, amen, when they're hungry and they've lost their job, they may have talked about you before. They won't have nothing bad to say about you then. They'll have respect for you. See, your your good works and, and our the good things that we do, it'll shut up the naysayers. It'll cause the backbiters, amen, to be ashamed of themselves. We have a lot of problem with bullying in schools and even have problem with bullying with adults. 
in the workplaces. You understand what I'm saying? You'll have two or three employees that'll they'll talk about another employee, make fun of them. Now, it's all right to tease as long as you do it in front of them and you're just doing it out of fun not to put them down. Amen? But, you know, there's some. They just, they'll find somebody and they just constantly nag, nag, nag. Amen. Uh, belittling them uh, the entire time. Uh, that's not right. But you see that and you see it going on in the schools and you see it everywhere. Amen. There's people that's doing things today trying to get those things stopped. But it's not easy because it's, in several different generations. It was back even in the time when uh, I was a boy growing up. I remember one bully that weighed a whole lot more than I weighed, had long hair. We was teenagers. He was, in fact, a senior in high school, and I was a junior. Oh, boy, he's making it hard on me. I mean, big old shoulders out like this and arms about that big around and stout as a mule. He just kept on and on and on. And finally, one day, I said, I'd rather be dead is to live like this. And I don't care if he kills me. I'm ready to die. I can't take another day of this. So that day he started his bullying, he had long hair, just like Austin right there in the beard. I wrapped all my fingers in that hair and got all I could get, and I took his head and went across that knee. Amen. And then I set it down on my knee the last time, and I pulled just as hard as I could. That hair, he screamed like a woman. Oh, oh. You're pulling my hair out, and I said, I'll leave nothing but hair and blood. If you ever open your mouth one more time to me, I've had it. I'll pull it out and leave it laying right here on the floor in a puddle of blood. That was the end of the bullying. We become good friends after that. Amen. That's the truth. And I didn't get in trouble. The teacher I looked up was standing in the door like this right here. smiling. He took us to the principal's office. The teacher called the principal out in the hall and talked to the principal. And the principal come back in and kind of had a funny look on his face, kind of smiling. He said, well, here you've had some trouble. Let's don't have no more trouble. I said, well, that's up to him. I told him I'd pull his hair out and leave it in the floor. And I meant what I said. Had all I'm going to take. Amen. So I got rid of the bullying. That stopped it right there. We become friends. Amen. Most of the bullies are all cowards anyhow, unless they got two or three to laugh while they're picking at you. Amen. That's the way it is in the workplace. Amen. They'll make fun of you. They'll try to get you fired. Things of that nature makes them feel big. You know what? They're big. Uh, They ain't big to me. They're a wimp. They're a sissy. If they're a man or a strong woman, they'll look you right straight to the face and tell you the truth. If they're strong enough to tell the truth, some people are too weak to tell the truth. Boy, I'm playing tonight, and I'm on a roll. Praise the Lord. But the truth is the truth. We don't need bullies. Amen? Mm-hmm. Honest conversation. Amen. So that they can say good about us. Look at verse number 13 now. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man For the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man unless it goes against the word of God. You cannot follow God's word and man's word at the same time. But to follow man's ordinances like speeding, when the speed limit says 55, it don't mean 85. It means 55. That's not a suggestion. It don't say speed suggestion. It says (laughs) speed limit. Yeah. I had one of my friends got a 75, a mile an hour ticket in a 60 zone the other day. I just shook my head. So see, there you go. 
You break the laws of the land. Amen. You have to pay. So, and, and I'm not saying that you're going to go to hell if you break a, the speed limit. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying you're supposed to keep those laws. And when you don't, you get caught. You know, you have to pay the ticket. That's just all there is to it. Amen. Do the crime, do the time. Amen. So the ordinances, we have to follow them as long as they don't go against the commandments of God or the word of God. And when we do that, we become um, peacemakers. We become, amen, um, uh, light in a world that's full of darkness. Most of the world are rebellious. There ain't nobody telling me what to do. Well, where did you think you got that? It didn't come out of the word. I just read what the word said. That spirit come from Jezebel. You're Jezebel's son or daughter. <laughs> Amen. That's exactly right. Amen. Sure does say that. Amen. So, uh, therefore, we don't need to rebel. And when that spirit of rebellion jumps up in us, could be because of kids we went to school with years ago, could be because of people that we've worked around, could be because of a lot of different things. We pick up on stuff. Y'all ever pick up on stuff? That's why sometimes when you get poison oak, you can share it with the whole family. <laughs> Especially if it happens to be running a little bit. Amen. And after it comes in blisters, I got poison oak one time. Well, I've got it several times down through the years. But one time I got two or three little old bumps on my one of my arms here somewhere in the logwoods in February off a vine, off a tree. I was snaking them out and having to put the choker around the logs and hook it to the tractor and loader and, and, and snake it out of the woods and I'd take the chainsaw and I'd, I'd, I'd yard them, cut them off at 10 foot logs or 12 or whatever it was, you know, get it loaded on the truck and I'd haul them to the, uh, to the uh, sawmill and unload them, come back while they was cutting another load. But anyway, um, I, and then I was around that and I never would have thought, I'd seen them poison oak vines on a, on a log there that I just got through snaking out. And I thought, well, ain't nothing to that. It's dead. It's in the middle of the winter. It's cold. <laughs> Boy, did I get me an education. I got two or three bumps on that arm right in here, right in there. That's where I got it. Sometime over the night, during the night, I fold my arm over Jenny. She had to go to the emergency room. That's the truth. One of the worst cases of poison oak she ever had. And she got it off of two or three little bumps right past my wrist right there, right in there. In February, cold weather. Amen? She's highly allergic. She could just about look at it and catch it. Uh, so he had to be careful. If I ever get poison oak, I better not or she'll wind up going to the doctor. She's got it a lot worse than what I do. I, I can usually scratch like a dog. You don't know, put a little calamine lotion on <laughs> <laughs> little calamine lotion on it. It'll dry up in three or four days. Oh, not with her. She goes to swelling. And she gets in bad shape. So what I'm trying to say is uh, we can catch things from other people, habits and uh, philosophies and rebellion and uh, cocky spirits. And ooh. I don't like to be around arrogant people and people that knows everything. There's some people, they can walk right up and see something one time and they're a genius and they've had years of experience. <laughs> Being around people like that wars against me. I can take it a couple hours a week, but I can't take it all the time. It goes to pulling down on me. Amen. Being around somebody like that. Amen. How many of you ever seen Bullwinkle? The cartoon. You seen Bullwinkle? You watch the Mr. I've had to work around a few of them Mr. Know-it-alls, one or two Miss Know-it-alls. Amen. Don't matter what it is, they're a genius and they're a, uh, they're a professional on everything. You can hand them a balloon one time and they're a professional. Balloon blower. As soon as they figure out how to get it blowed up. <sighs> Things like that, arrogance, Pride where people lift themselves up. Amen. Verse 15. For so is the will of God that with well doing you may put to silence the ignorance 
of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the president. Honor the king, but we don't have a king on this planet except King Jesus. He's not here, but he'll be back any time. Amen. So when it says honor the king, it means honor the president. Amen. So, when we do these things, amen, we need to understand that when we do these things, we put to silence the ignorance of men. Verse 16, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness. Can I word that to where it's easier to understand what he's saying? Not use God's grace as a license to sin. That's exactly what that means, plain and simple. Maliciousness, getting into things, doing ungodliness, things that's not right. Don't use your freedom because you've been freed for sin as a cloak to hide and to cover up maliciousness, ungodliness, evil. There's some people today, they want to hide behind the church. Well, I'm a Christian. I've had this car a lot for 10 years, and they call me Honest Jim. <laughs> and uh, I go to church every time the doors is open, and I've got a book here to show you all the people that I've helped down through the years, and I think, yep, I need to go to another car lot. Got the wrong one, I can tell you that. If you got to try to convince everybody how honest that you are, you're probably a crook. That sounds like a politician or a devil or sometimes both. It's your, it's your record that goes before you. Amen. When you come in there, you're referred to by Aunt Maggie because Aunt Maggie got a good deal and you really helped her. Amen. Some people say, come, eat our food. We are the best restaurant there is. When somebody says, I just left the barbecue hut and it's the best food in Glasgow, then I swear I'm going to go eat. I'm not going to eat because Jimmy Wilson or somebody says it's the best in the world. I want to hear some proof. So your honesty and my honesty and our reputation is going to precede us. I guarantee you that right now. Amen. So we need to let our things that we're doing, you know, let it, let it be good. Uh, Put to silence ignorant people and, and don't use uh, this your freedom as a cloak of maliciousness. Some people, when they go to running for public office, <laughs> they rededicate their lives unto the Lord. They ain't been to church in 30-something years. When they're running for office, they go until the election's over. If they're voted in, they don't go back to church anymore because they ain't got time. If they ain't voted in, then they're mad at the people and they're mad at God and they won't go back to church. It's kind of like a guy running for sheriff one time um, a few miles from here. It's been years and years and years ago. Uh, Had the election. The election's over. He's running for sheriff, and he lost. Some of them seen him the next morning. He was carrying a gun. And they said, why have you got that gun? He said, anybody ain't got no more friends in this town than I've got needs to carry a gun. Him and his wife's the only two that voted for him. So our our reputation precedes us. People know people know us better than we know ourselves. Amen. Some people will try to give you all that stuff about how good they are. There was a man who lived in Allen County years ago, a good Christian man, and he never did register to vote, never voted a day in his life. There's one of the guys there in Allen County running for sheriff. So they went and seen the man and said, I'd like for you to come and vote for this man. And uh, he said, well, I've never registered to vote. He said, I'd like to take you to town, and I'd like for you to register, and I'd like for you to help this man out. He said, is he an honest man? He said, he's one of the most honest men I've ever seen in my life. He said, is he trustworthy? He said, yes, sir, you can trust him. There's no doubt about that. He said, I wouldn't vote for him at all. 
He said, well, why? He said, I ain't going to ruin a good man. His philosophy, his philosophy was a little bit, little bit different than some people's, amen, but it's pretty well the truth, and there's some good politicians, I'm sure, around here and yonder, but they ain't very many of them, amen, but, and, and, and it's because of a man wants to blow everything up of how good they are, amen, to tell everybody what I'm going to do for you, amen, they go to kissing babies, and passing out cigars, Amen. And then they, you know, get in the office and then they, when your road gets washed out, they never heard of you before. <laughs> Ooh, I'm wound up like an eight day clock tonight. Amen. This is the truth. I done seen some of that stuff in the past. Put me, if you'll vote for me, Jimmy, I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to gravel that road and I'm going to grade her up and down real good. I mean, I'm going to take care of it. All I need is your vote this October. And I'm the man that'll get her done. <laughs> yeah. The only thing he'd been good at is hauling manure, but he'd had to carry it himself out. <laughs> In the next spreader. <laughs> hey Amen. There's, there's some of them out there. <laughs> so you need to, <laughs> need to tell the truth because our reputation, reputation, Precedes, <laughs> precedes us. It's about wh who we are and not who we say we are. There's always going to be somebody tell you, you know, how good they are and all you know, this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. Servants, be subject to your own masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. That means the contrary ones. That means them that you can't stand to work for. Be good for be good to them, amen. We had one years ago, and I've told this story lots of times, that nobody much liked, and different ones would quit, and some would threaten to quit, and all this, he had an arrogant spirit about him, smart mouth. Well, Brother Jimmy, how did you handle it? I didn't. God saved him and took care of everything. Amen, the Lord saved him, he did. He was, when he come back to work, he had a heart attack, and the Lord saved him on the way to the hospital. And you know what? He come back to work. That was the nicest man I was ever around in my life. I'm telling you, you've never seen such a difference in a man. Amen? Thought the world of him. Amen? It still do today when I see him. I've run across him. I hadn't seen him in a while, but I run across him just a few years back. But anyway, uh, God has a way of changing us. Amen? But to be, um, you know, obedient Amen, servants. And I know you're looking at that and saying, well, that's to the slaves that's got a master. Let me tell you something. When you got bills to pay, you're slaves to the economy. <laughs> Amen, you're going to have to pay them bills. That money has to come from somewhere. There's not enough us people that's working to keep everybody up. Somebody else is going to have to work. Amen, so you'll have to get out and get you a job. You'll have to work till you're old enough to retire. Amen. And you'll have to provide for your family. I always provided for my family. I went to work when I was sick. There's been lots of times I took alka or Plus, busting headache, got a fever, be sick a week, coming down with the flu. I couldn't hardly go have the chills. I take alka or Plus, and it'd make me feel a little bit better for about four hours. I'd take him, and I, 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 and I went to the lunchroom, and I got one of them little soup bowls, and I go to the water fountain, and I put some water in that soup bowl, and I go plop, plop, fizz, fizz. And I drink that stuff. Nasty, lemon flavored. But it kept me going. Amen. Kept me going until I could get in the car, get back to the house, and crash on the couch. Stayed there till the next morning. Get up, carry my alka plus, and away we went again. Done that. One day, the foreman come by and said, why don't you go home? I was standing with my head hung over in the dumpster, vomiting. Done worked, and I don't tell you how many trips I made, jumped off the forklift, went over to that dumpster and vomited. He said, you need to go home. I said, well, I, I just just hate to. He said, no, I said, 
I want you to go home. You don't need to be working like this. So I went home. I said, I'll be back tomorrow. He said, well, I hope you're better. I said, I will be. I got enough bills to pay. I got to be better. Half a day is all I can miss. Because let me tell you something. When you're raising three boys and your wife's not working, amen, you can't make it on 35 hours. You need 40. 48 when you can get it. Amen. To have enough money to be able to make all the ends meet. Amen. Anybody else can understand what I'm saying? Mm, some of y'all done been there too, hadn't you? Amen. We'll pick up with verse number 19 next time. Amen. But be subject to your own masters, to your boss. Listen to what he says or what she says. Don't answer back to them. Thank you all that's watched by live streaming. Please consider sharing this on your timeline. It'll liven them up or make them mad one or the other. Amen. But the, if it makes them mad, it'll help them. The truth is the truth. Amen. The Lord loves you. I, I didn't write the Bible. All I'm doing is teaching it. If it angers you, you need to talk to the Lord about that. Amen. <laughs> Ain't nothing I can do to help you. Thank you. God bless you and good night.